Hello, this is Grandin Gill. I'm a professor at the University of South Florida, and this is the sixth video in a series of videos that talks about um, organizations that can be used for different types of research papers. And um, this particular series is specifically designed for individuals uh, who do not spend a lot of time writing papers, either because they've just completed the doctoral program or are working on a doctorate, or because uh, their career has not required it, but now all of a sudden they want to write papers. For this reason, it's kind of mechanical. It uses a technique that I call the LIFO method, which is explored uh, in much more detail in another video, but I'll also talk about it briefly in the next slide. And uh, associated with each of these videos is a Microsoft Word template using the Informing Science Institute's uh, basically uh, journal formatting that uh, uh, provides considerably more detail than will be provided in these uh, slides in this video, uh, which is just really designed to be an introduction. So at any rate, this is the uh, sixth video, as I said, and the focus is on design science research. And design science research is a relatively new type of research, which is gaining a lot of traction in the information systems area. And uh, it looks at research in a very, very different way. In particular, uh, design science research almost always has two components. One component is looking at the development of an artifact or a series of artifacts, and that part of the research is designed to be very, very practical. So most design science research uh, takes place in a real world context. It's often action research where the researcher is intimately involved in what's being researched. The second element of design science research is gaining insights that can be applied to future design projects. So you've got part one, demonstrating the artifact, that a better artifact was created through the process, and objective two, uh, helping us learn more about design science. Uh, this means that a lot of possible organizations for papers are possible, but as I emphasize up front, this is really designed for people who are confronted with a blank page and uh, want to use uh, a relatively uh, mechanical organization uh, to write the paper. Just as a quick review, in part two, I introduced what I refer to as the LIFO structure for creating a paper. And I was given uh, an introduction to this structure from my colleague, uh, G.J. DeVretta, who uh, deserves all the credit for it. But what it basically notices is that the typical paper structure uh, consists of parts that sort of wind up the paper and then unwind the paper. And we tend to unwind in the reverse order of the uh, winding. So it's basically like a last in, first out stack. In practical terms, this means that if you start with an introduction, you're going to raise issues uh, that position the paper and are resolved and uh, discussed in the conclusion. Uh, your background section, which differs according to the type of paper is going to get resolved in your destruct discussion section and this is where you talk about the contribution. Uh, where a method section is appropriate, uh, the method section is resolved when you present your results and we call this how you execute the research. And in almost all the paper structures that I will be discussing, and there are six in the series, uh, we will use this basic approach. Now this approach um, is very formulaic. If you've written lots of research papers, uh, you can come up with your own approach to presenting the papers, but this series is really designed for people who have not written a lot of research papers and are looking for a reasonably mechanical way of uh, getting started. 
So how would we apply the LIFO method to a design science project? Well, to begin with, uh, we will start in it with an introduction, uh, the way we start all papers. And the introduction should make the reader want to go on. It should identify kind of the motivation of the paper. It should set the stage for the paper. And issues that are raised in the introduction uh, should be wrapped up in the conclusions. Again, this is the LIFO approach. You keep adding things to the stack, and then when it comes time to resolve them, you start popping them off the stack in the opposite order in which they were added. So your introduction should tie closely to your conclusions. Now, in design science, your background sections are likely to have two elements. One element is going to describe the context with respect to the um, artifact that's being created, or the series of artifacts, and I'll talk about this a little bit more. Uh, and then the other one should deal with design science itself. What insights are we going to uh, learn about design in general uh, through the research that was conducted here? From there, uh, you will see the wrap up in terms of uh, implications for design science, which will wrap up the design science research review and implications for stakeholders, which should wrap up uh, some of the ideas and questions raised in the context. Now, if the principal focus of the paper is on insights for design science, then I'd probably suggest the opposite order. I'd start with the review of design science, then I'd present the context, and when I wrapped it up, I'd provide the implications for stakeholders before I provided the implications for design science. Again, this is strict following of the LIFO approach. Now, the narrative in design science is going to walk the reader through the design process. And uh, uh, just sort of briefly, what the design process is likely to look like is something along the following lines. Uh, you will have one or more artifacts. In this illustration, I've got two artifacts. And uh, when you're designing an artifact, you will begin with some set of requirements. And by the way, the requirements themselves could be an artifact. So you might have one cycle to create a set of requirements and then another cycle to create an artifact that meets the requirements. You will then have some sort of ideation process where you come up with ideas uh, that are appropriate to be incorporated in the artifact. This is the sort of creative aspect of design. And by the way, different methods of design science are going to have different names for these things. So don't use my names. Use the names of whatever articles you're looking at uh, or tying to the uh, uh, research uh, that will make it much, much easier for people to understand what you're talking about. Uh, so after you've come up with ideas, uh, you're going to construct the artifact and then the next important stage is the evaluation stage where you evaluate the artifact. Now in many design processes, uh, uh, well before you hit a prototype stage or a point at which you have actually created something that can be used, you're going to start evaluating. So there are going to be a lot of different uh, ways you can evaluate. You might have a panel of experts look at it. Uh, you might uh, show sketches to users. But whatever technique you have, uh, it's important to document it. Because what makes design science research design science research is the fact that we formalize the design process as opposed to just going at it ad hoc. So design science research is about adding some structure to the design process. So when you're writing your narrative, you always have to be very specific about what is the artifact. How were the requirements constructed? What process was used to create new ideas? Very critically, how did you evaluate the artifact? And after the evaluation, you have a reassessment. 
And one of the things about design cycles is they tend to just keep going around. But at some point, you have to decide it's we've done enough, it's time to move on to the next cycle, which often means looking at a different artifact. So we might have an initial cycle where the goal is to create a set of requirements that we can um, use to design the new artifact, which might be an organization structure, it might be a piece of software. Uh, design science is extremely flexible in what constitutes an artifact, but it should be something that is physically expressed, whether it be a diagram or uh, a white paper or a piece of software or uh, you know a mechanical device. You need to be specific about the artifact. So in the reassessment stage, what you're trying to do is decide at what point you the process is completed and it's time to move on to the next artifact. And in your narrative, what you want to show is that you've applied a very systematic design process. Normally, it's going to be a design process that has been um, you know, specified or recommended in another paper and have applied it. You may also, um, in um, your narrative, talk about ways that you modified the design um, process that you were basing your research on to accommodate the needs of specific artifacts. That type of modification is an example of the contribution that you could make to design science research. So, uh, once you have written your narrative, then uh, the first thing you may want to do in the discussion is identify the interesting aspects of the narrative, and then, as I say, we close off the DSR review with implications, we close off the context with stakeholders, and I usually recommend putting the uh, limitations and directions for future research, which are kind of obligatory in most papers, uh, at the end of the discussion section or give it a section itself right before the conclusions. A lot of uh, authors and reviewers like to see these things at the very end of the paper, but as I'm emphasizing in all of these presentations, uh, I personally don't like to see a paper end uh, with the author describing all the things that he or she did wrong and all the things that he or she should have done and would like to do in the future. Uh, that is just a personal opinion and what you'll find is some reviewers object uh, to putting it anywhere but the end of the conclusion, so you've got to get used to that. The critical thing about design science research is it is really intended for two audiences. It's intended for the design science researchers, but it's also intended for people who are interested in the artifact. And as a result, it tends to be much more practically oriented. So uh, one of the things you want to do is make sure your narrative is written in a way that is interesting and which shows the impact of the design process. Well, thank you for listening and feel free to look at the other five videos in this series. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, my email address is grandon, that's G-R-A-N-D-O-N, at usf.edu. Once again, grandon at usf.edu. Thank you very much for watching.